the past couple weeks, I've been working from home and spending quite a bit of time exploring my neighborhood. And for some reason, I've been finding more and more excuses to drink beer at random hours of the day. This morning, I'm whipping up some beer mosas. That's part beer, part orange juice, and if you're suddenly motivated to make one, may I suggest using a Saison. Saison is a farmhouse style ale that's typically a little fruity, a little spicy, and relatively low in alcohol. But like most farmhouse beers, there's wide variation from example to example. My favorites almost always include some Britannomyces, and you'll even find some containing Lacto and Pedio, usually referred to as mixed culture Saisons. To keep myself stocked with Saison for all my day drinking needs, I ordered some ingredients online. But shipping yeast and bacteria through the mail still seems a little sketchy to me because it's not temperature controlled. Instead, I'm planning to grow a starter from these bottle dregs. And if this works out, I might just make it through this pandemic. To wake up our bottle dregs, I went ahead and made about a thousand milliliters of 1040 wort using light dry malt extract and filtered water. I also added about two grams of Williamette hops. After boiling for a few minutes, I let the wort cool to room temperature before adding it to this flask. Now that most of the wort is in the flask, it's time to add our yeast. In addition to the bottle dregs, I'm adding an old hoard of experimental yeast that's supposed to enhance hop aromas. It was actually living in the flask before I cleaned it out and smelled so good I decided to keep it going. The only reason I added some hops to the starter is because this yeast basically requires hops. The last thing I'm adding is about a tablespoon of yeast nutrient. Now, I'll just let this spin for about 24 hours on the stir plate and we'll see what happens. Now, let's make some beer. beer, I'm using about 73% Pilsner, 24% Munich, and 3% Kara Munich. The mash schedule is super simple today. We're going single infusion and I'm shooting for a mash temperature of about 152, so I have this Anvil Foundry brew system set to 157 for mash in. While the strike water heats up, I'm adjusting the water profile for this beer using gypsum, calcium chloride, and a little lactic acid. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. All right, let's get this thing going. Keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated. Then bump the kettle down a couple degrees to our target temp of 152 and start a one hour timer. Before I yank these grains, I want to Vorloff for the last 15 minutes to try to clear up this wort. While the mash finishes up, let's go see what other projects we can work on inside.
It's been over a month since we made this quick sour. We nailed the acidification with a pH of 3.5, added three different kinds of juice, and it's been in secondary ever since. Now, it's time to get this thing into a keg. First, I need to flush the keg with CO2. This will remove some of the oxygen that could ruin the beer. Now, I can send the beer from the carboy to the keg. The last thing I need to do is pop the top on and purge any remaining oxygen. I like to fill the headspace with 5 to 10 psi of CO2, pull the release valve, and repeat the process 4 or 5 times. I'm going to throw this thing in the kegerator and I'll meet you back in the garage. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. I'm going no sparge today, so now that the basket is up and out of the wort, I'm cranking this Anvil Foundry brew system to full blast. quick. We're up to full boil and it's time for our first hop addition. Here's 21 grams of saz and our 60 minute timer starts now. Five minutes into our boil and we're ready for our next hop addition. Here's 7 grams of Zaz and we've got 15 minutes left. Oh, and let's get that wort chiller in there. That's 15 minutes and the end of our boil. Our final hop addition is seven grams of Zaz and I'm also gonna turn on the hose to start chilling this thing down. Once we're cooled down and in the carboy, I'll pitch the yeast. I'm going with about 400 milliliters of yeast slurry pulled right off the stir plate. knows what's going to happen with this beer. The bottle drags add another variable into the equation so I'm definitely going to keep a close eye on it for the next few days to make sure everything goes smoothly. More to come. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.